God loves you and so do I. God loves you and so do I. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together. Bind us together with love. I want to continue today to talk on relationships, the power and the influence of people in your life. Good relationships and bad relationships. Those who are sent by God to bless you and those who are sent by the devil to deceive you and derail you. Relationships. Somebody once said, if it wasn't for people, life would be easy or difficult. I beg to differ. If it wasn't for people, none of us would be here this morning. I thank God for the body of Christ. I thank God for the church. I thank God for my brothers and my sisters. I thank God for the pastors that I have in my life. I thank God for the believers I have in my life. I want you to know this morning, I am a fan of the local church. And so is Jesus Christ, who said in Matthew 16 verse 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Sometimes people ask me, Pastor, what is the Lord doing? Haven't you got a fresh word, a new revelation? Well, God's not a political party. You know, politicians come and go, political parties come and go. But for 2,000 years, God has been very consistent and very precise in what He is building. And that is His church, the local church. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If you love God and you are thankful for the church this morning, come on, give God one big praise offering in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, Blimvenein Johannesburg. Thank God for the people in your life. When I got saved, God told me three things. God told me, submit. My pastor at that time was Pastor George Goodyear. God placed me in a little church. At that time, there were only 90 people. I was connected to that church till he died and went on to be with the Lord for 11 years. And then God told me to go to Bible school, which I did for three years. And then God told me to be part of a home cell. I thank God for that local church. Those small, that's where I was mentored. That's where I rubbed shoulders with other people. And that's where I learned Christianity. Because the acid test of Christianity is seen in your love walk. Your relationship with other people. Amen. Mensa. Nexus yay. People that rub us up the wrong way. and People that bless us. It's not a person that, have, that are sitting here that haven't been touched by other people. In a good way, in a bad way. Some of you have scars this morning because of people. Some of you are excited about Jesus this morning because of people. I thank God for people. My best friend, first thing he did after I got saved, he took me to a home cell. So I went to church every Sunday and I went to a home cell every week. I awoke from the army to get to church on a Sunday. There was this burning desire in my heart to be part of of the local church. And I thank God today that I understood the value of being together with other believers. That no man is an island unto himself. We need people. While we live on planet earth, we need people. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So let's talk this morning about the power and the influence of relationships. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, the Bible says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. In the message translation, the Bible says, Don't fool yourself. Don't let yourself be poisoned by this anti-resurrection loose talk. Bad company ruins good manners or good people. Bad company. People. People that bless us or people that derail us. People. Sometimes people close to us that say something that robs us of our confidence in God. People that build you or break you down. People that inspire you to climb the ladder or people that inspire you to stay where you are. People who push you into the local church or people who pull you away from the local church. I want to talk about those relationships this morning. I want to talk about godly, loving church relationships versus toxic, destructive relationships. If God wants to bless you, He brings somebody into your life. If Satan wants to derail you, He also will bring somebody into your life. And that person won't come like the devil. He's not going to come like Casper the ghost or he's not going to look like hot stuff, the red little devil with a pitchfork. He's going to look like a loving, caring person. Like that person at your work, 
that suddenly tells you that you look beautiful and lovely and your husband never does. And the next minute he enters your heart or that girl at university, you're on fire for Jesus Christ. And along comes a spider, a guy that doesn't love God the way you do. And he lures you away from Jesus and from the body of Christ. Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy... That was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Verse 12, therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people. And holiness, talking about the body of Christ or the church of Jesus, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many people become defiled. Relationships. People that will inspire you or people that will derail you. And I want you to know this morning, while you're alive on planet earth, Satan is after your soul. I don't mean to put fear in you, but I mean to warn you this morning that the devil will plot and scheme against you to isolate you so that he can annihilate you. That's why God built the church. The church is God's pillar and ground of truth. The church is the place where God will protect you. The church is the place where doctrine must be preached. The church is the family of God, the Bible calls. The body of Christ, the Bible calls. The bride of Christ, the Bible calls. The church is what Jesus is coming back for. So we need good relationships in a local church. We need to be planted in a local church. We need to watch out for people that will come and spill their issues into our hearts, taking us away from the family of God. We need to watch out for toxic relationships, people that live with offense, people that live with bitterness, people that are filled with worldliness, people that are filled with hatred, people that are not in love with God, who infiltrate our lives sent by the enemy to derail us, to steal our hearts away from God. I dare to say everybody sitting in this place, at one time or another, somebody has offended you. Somebody said something that rubbed you up the wrong way, but you had to do the right thing, which is when you're at the, in the presence of God, you forgive so that your Father may also forgive you. While you live on planet earth, offenses will come, but we can never allow the root of bitterness to come into our hearts. Because when people carry their bitterness, they walk around. Come here quickly, my three J's. J.J., Jack, and Jerry. Jack and Jill. And tie yourself with that cord of love this morning. That is the journey of Christianity. We should all be tied together. We should be knit together with other believers. People who love God the way that we love God. But in this journey, as we climb, somebody start climbing that ladder. We need to watch out for people above us or people around us that come and spill their issues upon us. People who come and they just pollute you with something that they say or they pollute you with a little bit of worldliness or they invade your heart by saying the wrong thing, moving you away from what God has planned for you. Toxic people, I call them. Toxic relationships. People who dump their issues on other people. You're not a waste dump. You're not a trash can. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Individually, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And then the Bible says we as believers are being built up as a dwelling place for God. We are the family of God and we should, the Bible says, keep the unity of the Spirit. We should protect our hearts one to another and not allow the enemy to come and dump waste on us. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, the Bible says, Guard your heart more than anything, for out of it flow the issues of life. We need to watch people who spill their issues into our lives. People who spill their offenses. People who spill their worldliness. People who spill their anger. People who spill their false doctrines into our hearts. We need to 
guard our hearts with all diligence and stay planted in the house of God. Stay planted in the word of God. 2,000 years later, my dear brother and my dear sister, the word is still the way that God talks to us. Not feeling, not an emotion and not an angel that transforms himself. If God talks to you, God will talk to you through his word. The Bible says he builds his, his church according to his word. Come on, you can say amen this morning. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 to 32, Paul warns, he says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. You know, we all are climbing this ladder. I'll climb this side. The ladder of life, the ladder of success, your business, your career, whatever it is, we are all called to climb this ladder. Many people think they can climb this ladder alone. You cannot. The Bible talks about a grandstand in heaven. In Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible calls about those who have championed this cause, those who have run this race and kept the faith, like the Apostle Paul, like Abraham, like Noah, Old Testament saints, New Testament saints. They're all in that grandstand this morning, cheering you on and cheering me on to run your race. Come on, Tabu. Come on, uh, Jonathan. Come on, Johannes. Whoever you are, run your race. There is a, a crowd in the heavens cheering you on. To climb your ladder, to follow those who are above you in the Lord. People that have lived this life, people that have built successful marriages, people that have lasted for 50 years in Christianity, people that know where the footmarks are, but they also know where the pitfalls are. When I climb this ladder by myself, I may feel strong for a moment, but the time will come, especially as I go higher, where there will be lack of oxygen. And I don't care who you are. Because you are a human being, sometimes you will struggle with your humanity and the enemy will try and trip you up or derail you. That's when you need brothers that can talk to you, that can inspire you. When you feel like quitting, when you feel like giving up, when you feel abandoned, when you feel betrayed, when you feel you cannot go on anymore, then we need people over us. Pastor Jack, we need him then to shout down to Jerry. Come on, Jerry. You can do it. Come on, Jerry. Climb in Jesus' name. Don't give up now, Jerry, in Jesus' name. And then you need people below you in a home cell like a JJ that cheers you on from the bottom and says, come on, keep on keeping on. Come on, go back to your business. Come on, sort out your issues in Jesus' name. Woe to the man that is alone when the enemy comes. Because who will save God him? Who will protect him? That is the church of Jesus Christ, portrayed by those three people. We should all follow somebody and we should all lead somebody. We should all love other people and not only ourselves. We should all be involved in building God's kingdom. The Bible says don't only look out for your own interest, but look out for the interest of other people also. So when you get saved, you become part of the body of Christ. The Bible explains the body of Christ, the local church, as a human body, fitly joined together by the Holy Ghost. Every member, every part. I may be preaching my mouth, you looking at my face all the time, but my feet are carrying me on this platform all the time. My hand is doing its part. My mind, my heart has to beat. Even the uncomely parts that you cannot see. The ministry of helps. Those in the background, those in the parking lot, those who are paying the bills, those who are praying for the ministry, they are all doing their part to make sure that this mouth can function and bring the word of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible says, The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We should never sever the love that binds us together. We are different from the world. The world loves up to a point. We love forever. The world shoots their wounded. We go as buffalo and we recover our wounded. We don't judge our brother. We don't criticize our brother. We don't write people off. We don't attack one another. We are not the devil, the accuser of the brethren. We are the family of God. We are the church of Jesus Christ that God is building. Come on. And it's the love of God that binds us together. Oh, come on, somebody. Shout amen in this place. Hallelujah. So if God's going to bless you, it's going to be through somebody. If God's going to promote you, it's going to be through somebody. God builds His church using people. We are lively stones. Each one of us have a role to play, tied together with this cord of love, the Bible says. A cord that cannot be broken. The difference between us and the world is exactly in this. In the world, people love up to a point. The world is known for broken relationships. 
the body of Christ. Jesus in John chapter 13 verse 34 and 35, he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I've loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, by the love you have one for another. So if he becomes weak, they don't attack him from above. They pray for him. And that's what the church is. The church is a family. The church is what Jesus is building. Relationships out of every culture, out of every color, out of every background. Bringing together the illiterate and the literate. The most intellectual and the most illiterate under one roof. No matter who you are, how wealthy or how poor you are. Your significance is in the body of Christ. Come on. That Jesus died for. That Jesus is building. You are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the head. We are the body. And the Bible says we cannot say I have no need of you. Because God is the master architect, has designed this building and he is building us together. Shaping us and molding us. And it's exactly that person that rubs you up the wrong way that you need in the body of Christ. The Bible says, iron sharpening iron. Well, I don't like that person. I, 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 I don't feel. Uh, because he's just like you. When, you. when you hang out with him, you see yourself. God placed him there to perfect your character. And he says, love. That person that rubs you up the wrong way, God says, forgive. That person that offended you, God says, bless. You are the body. You are the church of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to tell you this morning that you are part of the greatest miracle you are part of what God is doing. For 2,000 years, God has been doing this very thing. He's building His church. Every time somebody gets saved, God is strengthening and enlarging His church. God is building His church. When God plants you in a local church, it's because God is building His church. But understand exactly what God is doing. The devil tries to do the opposite. God gathers, the enemy scatters. God assembles, the enemy dismantles. God encourages the enemy breaks down. The Apostle Paul says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for the necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearer. We should be one another's greatest fans. We should cheer one another on. No matter what happens, what mistake our brother or sister makes, we should not stand there and condemn and judge and accuse them. That's when we have to rally as those buffaloes go and recover that brother, recover that sister, go find that prodigal and bring him back to the house of God. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. Because we are different by the love we have one for another. In Galatians, Paul says, let love be a real thing. Says, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed of one another. So when you talk about your brother and your sister, verse 30 says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. It's like taking a knife and cutting yourself. Because it's His body. You are part of His body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says, For this reason many of you are sick and feeble and many die young, not discerning the Lord's body. You cannot carelessly talk about your brother and your sister. You cannot point a finger to a brother or a sister. We have to bless and never curse and cover and protect and love and nurture. Because people will make mistakes. Who doesn't? I'm not saying it's an excuse to live as a sinner because you can't go live as a sinner any longer. You've been saved by the grace of God. But when people make mistakes, we are the body. When your body gets cut, the body rallies together. The white blood cells the, uh, rallies together to heal that part of the body. When an arm is broken, you tie it to the body to heal that body. Close to the body you keep. Close to the body. So when you go through a difficult time, when you go through pain, when the enemy attacks you, you need to be close to the body. You need to be close to people that love you. You need to be safe in relationships, people who will never leave you. As God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is the church, different until death do us part. 
Sadly, the world has made a mockery of the church. And religion has made a mockery of the church. Because people don't understand that this is all about love. God so loved that He gave. Christianity is about love. Love for God and love for your brother and love for your sister. For the Bible says if you cannot love your brother whom you can see, how can you say you love God whom you cannot see? You cannot. Because we are members of His body. Joined together by the Holy Ghost. So next time you see a brother and a sister, thank God for that person. Thank God for every member. Thank God for the person that is not like you. But thank God more for the person that is exactly like you. And discern what God is doing. And be part of what God is doing. And stay planted where God has placed you. And celebrate what God is doing in your life. If you plan to go to the top, and it's still a journey for some of you, many, many, many years. The only way you will do it is connected with other people. I've been in this journey for 31 years. I've seen many people fall out for many reasons. I've seen many people come to ruin, which is one of the most tragic things as a pastor. And it's always when the enemy isolates somebody from the body. Don't let the devil isolate you from your friends in that home cell. Don't let the devil isolate you from other Christians. Don't let the devil isolate you because of your tragedy. Don't let the devil isolate you because you've been betrayed by another Christian. Don't let the devil isolate you from the body of Christ because there is protection in the church. Oh, come on. Somebody give God praise and thanks for the church of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are the body of Christ. We are different. We live by different rules. We live by the love that God has shed abroad in our hearts, bound together with cords of love that cannot be broken. No matter what you do, I love you. No matter what you do, I forgive you. How often, Lord Jesus, seven times? No, 70 times seven. The church. The love of God that the world will never understand. No matter how low somebody goes, that they will be a Christian to go help that person. No matter what mistake somebody does, that there will be a Christian that does not point a finger. But a Christian that will put his arms around that person and lift him up. That's what will bring revival to our world. By this all men will know you are my disciples by the love you have one for another. Love that is real. Love that is tangible. Love that is seen through the word of God. That thinks no evil. That rejoices not in iniquity. That believes all things. That hopes all things. That endures all things. A love that never fails. We should pray, bind us together, Lord, in our marriages, bind us together, Lord, in our home cells, bind us together, Lord, in our church, bind us together with love that cannot be broken because the enemy cannot penetrate a wall of unity. Where there's unity in love, the blessing of God is commanded. Oh, come on, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. So what am I saying to you this morning? Celebrate what God is doing and keep the toxic voices out. Stay planted where God has put you. In Psalm 92, the Bible says, verse 12 to 14, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. In Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25, are you guys okay? He says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more you see the day approaching. So stay connected to others and you'll be happier and you will live longer. Love others and don't just love yourself. If you plan to finish this climb, then stay connected to godly inspiring relationships in your local church. Ephesians 2 verse 19 and 22, the Bible says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place in God, of God in the Spirit. Let's be one another's fans. Let's give one another the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Let's cheer one another on. 
Let's cover one another. Story is told of a group of frogs. I'm almost finished. They traveled through a wood together. Suddenly two of them fell in this deep pit. And the other frogs gathered at the top of this pit, looking down. And those two frogs at the bottom of the pit were jumping frantically, trying to get out. Those at the top, feeling sorry for them, started shouting. You're never going to make it. Why don't you just give up? It's not worth all the trouble. Take your ease. Take your rest. The one frog responded to them, sat down and eventually died. But the other frog, the louder they shouted, the more he jumped, the more energetically he jumped. Eventually, with huge effort, he jumped out. The other frogs came to him and said, why did you keep on jumping? Did you not hear us? Say what? He said, did you not hear us telling you, why don't you give up? Why don't you quit? The frog explained, I'm hard of hearing. I thought you were cheering me on and encouraging me all the time. Come on, let's turn the negatives into a positive in Jesus' name. Let's use the negatives as a launching pad. But let's never give up on ourselves. Let's never give up on our brothers and our sisters in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sometimes people do things they don't mean to do. Don't let it derail you. You keep on hopping in Jesus' name. You keep on jumping in Jesus' name. You keep on running your race in Jesus' name. You keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And if somebody else jumps off the building, don't you go jump off with him. You run your race. You look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. When I told my beautiful wife, married 25 years now, that I love more than any other human being on planet earth. I told her several times in our first years of marriage, I said, my angel, I love you more than any person on planet earth, but I love Jesus more. And I understood that she loves Jesus more than me. Meaning if she decides to jump off the cliff, I ain't jumping with. Because one day I will stand before Jesus alone. When I get to the top of my ladder, no matter how many people helped me, inspired me, I'll stand before Jesus alone. Then I won't say, my wife didn't want to go to church. My wife got offended. My wife got mad. My wife, no. You have your own Bible. You read your own Bible. Amen. You say your own prayer. There is a relationship God will not share with anyone else. He said, if you love mother or brother or father or sister or wife more than me, you are not worthy of me and you cannot be my disciple. You better love Jesus more than you love any man on this earth. You better give your heart to Jesus and not to a human being ever. Oh, come on. Some young person, give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. You don't give your heart to a man. You don't give your heart to uh, 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 another woman. You give your heart to Jesus Christ. And you make sure that that heart stays on the altar. That heart stays with God all the days of your life. So that you, when you're in the presence of God, God through His Word can still speak into your heart. And it's not the voice of man that defines you. Or the voice of man that determines your destiny. It's the voice of God through the written Holy Scriptures. You jump because the Bible says you jump. You forgive because the Bible says you forgive. You bless because the Bible says bless. You give because the Bible says give. Oh, come on. You go to church because the Bible says neglect not the assembling of yourself together. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only one who died for you. He's the only Savior you have. He's the only mediator between God and man. And He's coming back for His church, washed in His precious blood. A church without spot or wrinkle. Come on, that is what God is building. So be a builder of the house of God. Run with people that love God. Run with people that love the body of Christ. Come on, you cannot love God and hate His body. It, it's not possible. Because how can you love God or listen to God who you cannot see? But you can't love people and listen to a man of God that God places over you in the Lord. Every person needs a church. If it's not this one, be planted in a church somewhere. Every Christian needs a purpose big and beyond himself. I thank God for the church. I thank God for my leaders. Sometimes I'll have Rick phone me. He's one of the men I submit to. He phoned me the other day. He said, Art. And he takes his way. He said, you need to rest a bit as well. If you want to last long, 
You can't just work, work, work. I take it as a word of God. Because sometimes we just go, 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 go. And we don't enjoy the journey. He was traveling with me one day in my car. We were going to Kimberley to do an outreach. He sat next to me. And I was going a little bit fast, a little uh, like a few kilometers quicker than I should have gone. And he put his hand on my leg. He looked at me and said, no more. It's not worth it. He said, your life is too important for the cause of God. Don't let this adrenaline get the better of you. No more. On that, I changed the bike. I was riding a super bike to something very slow. I changed. Because I have a man of God, I have a man of God that get my attention, that get my ear. When they talk to me, I know God is talking to me. Who's got your ear this morning? Who's got your heart this morning? Who, how does God talk to you? Don't tell me through from the heaven. God talks through people. Sometimes it's a donkey, but God will talk through people. When the prophet couldn't hear, God spoke through the donkey. God will always talk through a donkey. God will talk through somebody. To get your attention. To save you. I will build my church. Not a man's church. Not a denomination's property. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Nothing. Can break the love of God. There is no power greater than the love of God in our hearts. Oh, come on, church. The love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. When we love, that's when the world sees love because God is love. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together with love that the world may know. We are your disciples. Not by our revelation, not by our doctrine, not by our philosophy, but by our love. Love God and love your brother. And when your brother goes through a difficult time, the Bible says if one member suffers, the whole body suffers. You know, you, you, you drive a nail into the wall and you hit your little pinky. You don't just say, well, you deserved it. I'm just going to cut you off. You don't do that. I mean, you jump, ah, I mean, you, 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 the whole body focuses on that hurt. I mean, the whole body. Let's not be careless in our love one to another. The Bible says if one member is honored, we all rejoice. We don't sit there and say, why him and not me? We cheer him on. We say, thank you, God, for blessing him. We are so excited that she won Miss World. We are so excited. Oh, God, one member is honored. We are all honored. Hallelujah. He gets the prize. I'm getting the prize. I'm part of the body. Hallelujah. He goes ahead in life. I'm going ahead in life. I'm part of the body. The body of Christ. Where are you this morning? Thank you, guys. You can come down. Thank you. Let's give them a hand clap. Let's say thank you to them. Where are you this morning? Are you running your race for Jesus? Has he still got the final say in your heart? Does he have the authority of your life? Jesus Christ, is he the love of your heart this morning? Or have someone else taken your heart away from him? David prays, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. I want a heart that's after you, God. A heart that yearns for you. A heart that loves you. Who owns your heart this morning? Looking unto Jesus. If you die today, do you know that you know that you know you're going up to be with Him? Or are there unresolved issues that's keeping you away from Him? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving at this time, please. You've come here this morning, you say, Pastor, my heart doesn't belong to Jesus. I can't care to lose my Bible, but I'm honest with you, I Jesus is glad. I have lost myself somewhere in this journey. I lost myself somewhere in this journey. I've been hurt and sometimes people do get hurt. I've been disappointed and sometimes people do disappoint us. Yes, I've been, things happen. 
There are many people in church today with many scars. But we can't allow those scars to define us. We can't allow the bad moments to define us. We can't allow our hurt to become toxic in our lives. We have to forgive. So that we can carry the aroma of Christ which is love for people. We have to let go of issues. So that we can be the voice of God in our world. <laughs>